All right. Uh, good morning. Well, this is the Neary Building Committee uh, Communication Subcommittee meeting for Friday, January 26th. It is 9.04 a.m. All voting members are present. Um, first item of business is approval of meeting minutes from November 7th of 2023. Were there any comments on those? Seeing none, I'll move that we approve the minutes as presented. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Oh. All right, seconded <laughs> by Denise. Um, roll call vote. Denise? Aye. Roger? Aye. And I am I as well. So that is unanimous. Um, so two main items of business today. One is um, the project website. So that's our next agenda item. So um, Greg had solicited a proposal from um, the design team that you saw um, in, in our packet. Um, this is the same design team that had um, the, the, the biggest credential was the Arlington, the recent Arlington Schools website. So um, in terms of him thinking about the, the community, right, what we think the community will need to see to make an informed decision, um, that format in, in the way that that had come together was um, differentiating um, to him. Uh, so he he got in contact with the vendor. We had a quick call um, to just describe our project of what what the town is is doing, what the hot button issues may be, right? In terms of consolidation cost, like any project, right? And obviously there will be others that come up along the way that we probably don't even know about at this point. And um, this vendor has come back with, with a proposal. Um, theoretically, um, this would also go through the finance subcommittee because it's a cost um, as well, but it's a, um, item that this this subcommittee will largely be informing the content of in terms of any major messaging that goes out will have to be approved by this subcommittee. Obviously, grammatical status type updates will not require a public meeting for, for regular update, but we need to get something in place soon, right? And as you can imagine, uh, the um, time to get it up and running, you know, it's not going to be we approve something today, um, it's not gonna be up and running on Monday sort of thing. So my intent before we talk about scope, budget, all that is I've already um, talked with Kathy um, as chair of the finance subcommittee. Our intent is whatever we as the communications subcommittee are comfortable with after today is that we would bring in for approval just to the full NBC meeting at you know either hopefully for Monday but if not the following Monday, um, as opposed to then it going to the finance subcommittee, then having to circle it, it just to cut some steps out. And there, there's, it's not a huge, I don't think hopefully um, bone of contention. I think it's it's a question of cost um, is kind of where, I, where I'd be. Um, my understanding though, um, not being in the IT industry, but I have designed or worked with website platforms in the future is that this, is basically like working in programs like Microsoft Word. And then it magically appears on the internet once you take you know five steps, um, as opposed to needing to be, you know, we're not gonna have to have a graphic designer on staff, you know, we're not gonna have to have anyone that's really familiar with websites, like in terms of backend coding, this is really a turnkey solution. So um, I think our goal today is to see if we have any questions see if it, um, you know, this is the right team to hopefully accomplish um, our mission in terms of informing the public. And then um, if we're ready to take a motion on, on how we want to proceed. So I don't know who wants to go first, but that's the, um, the background. Um, shall I jump in? Go for it. Okay. And I've, I may look, you may see me looking to the left because I have, I have a, I have all, all of you over on my left hand screen, and I'm looking at the documentation uh, in front of me. So that's why I'm I'm showing you the side of my face a lot, not because I think you want to see it. Um, so uh, remind me, uh, who recommended this group? Was um, it the designer? No, this was um, 
No, the designer wouldn't have been in place at the point in time we got the recommendation. So it would have been a combination of the OPM and oh, actually, yeah, and I in candidly more importantly, um, Greg looking at the website as he was doing his research on other projects and being impressed by how the technology allowed him to become informed about a project that he obviously had no public interest in other than was trying to look for something at some point. Um, okay. Um, so, you know, you know, reference, I look at reference cells as the best kind, right? In other words, mm -hmm. uh, uh, we've got a recommendation from a couple of folks that, that, you know, we have confidence in, um, uh, I have some familiarity with with um, you know, kind of um, website, I guess I'll say, utilization. Uh, it absolutely uh, is helpful to be able to um, update things using Word and things like that. So you don't need a so you don't need to have a graphic designer involved all the time. Um, and the pricing does not seem unreasonable. Uh, basically, again, on on my limited uh, experience with kind of you know, using a couple of these things and um, um, kind of making decisions on on vendors to do this kind of thing. So that's you know that's a couple of now those are the couple comments I have. Okay, Denise. So Jason, in the scope of the work, um, will it be their responsibility? to make sure on the other side when it's done that it's up and running and in, in, and because I think it should be in numerous places. I think we should see it in, uh, and I think we will on um, uh, Greg's weekly update also on the town website and maybe as a standalone. So will that be part of this scope of work to make sure that once they're done, that the um, it will be um, you know finalized on the other side for utilization? Denise, are you are you asking once they've kind of completed the development of it? Then mm -hmm. well, I noticed that they do have. Um, the, I think they're going to host it, right, Jason? Um, yeah, so let's they, just say it's nearyschool dot com or something right. like mm -hmm. that for right. a mm -hmm. moment. So I guess my question is: Are they the ones who make sure that that nearyschool dot com goes to the places we want it to go? Because I think we want it to go. You know be available in different places so people can't say that they haven't been able to um, access the information. I think it's the other way around. And okay. Roger can correct me if he is, I would think, let's call it nearyschool.com. Sorry, I just see Kathleen in the waiting area. Um, um, let's just say nearyschool.com. Greg's team that writes the communication on a weekly basis would probably just have that in their template on a weekly basis that okay. then, morning Kathleen, um, I can't that, find that they just click that link and they come to our site would be how that would work. And then the town could put a per permanent link on their website once it's up and running so that if you go and make, if we made an update today, there has to, no one has to go even know that an update was made. Um, it would be just there. Um, and then one of the things that when we have the initial discussion folks is we will be allowed to, um, create listservs off of this. So for example, obviously students that are enrolled in the district automatically get Greg's communications. However, if someone's really interested in the community about this project, maybe they don't have kids in the school, but they're in a butter or just are concerned with the cost or the other ramifications, they'll be able to subscribe and know when updates are made um, as well. Now so, we, and, and we can... And, I'm sorry, Denise. Go ahead. No, that's right. I just think that the the more uh, visibility that we have, the better off we are because we want to make sure that everybody in the community can access it, whether it's through the town website. That's all I wanted to be sure that it was going to make its way to those places. And and we can post this link anywhere we'd like to post it, mm -hmm. right, Jason? I mean, we yeah. have total total flexibility and choice in, uh, in, in 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 where it gets posted and who you know, potentially making it acceptable to as many people as we possibly can. Agreed. I and think education about the project is very important. 
to the public, very important as to what we're doing and how it's going to happen. And because it's a, it's a big impact to the town. So the more they know and the more they understand uh, how we got here, because there's a lot of work that's already gone into this and there's a lot of work going forward. Um, right. The more they understand, like if we run into a problem, you know, we find out that there's, a, we, you know, they were t- we were talking the last time about the, the waste. Um, if we find out that that's a problem, keeping everybody up to date is really important. And that I think is our job as the communication committee. Yep. Makes sense. Go ahead, Kathleen. So I just, so in my previous district and I grew up in Marshfield, we were part of the build for Marshfield high school. This is years ago. Um, but it, it relates to, to South Road too. We partnered a lot with our PTO, but now our SO, SOS here to communicate a lot out. And it, that was an effective use because they've got the social media avenues too to be able to share it out. I agree with you, Denise. The more open, transparent we can be, and I'm, I'm happy to help navigate that as well, but I think they are a great resource. Um, we'll definitely take you up on that. <laughs> And, I, and, you know, that's one of the challenges of the three schools, right? Because you get three different SOSs, right? At least at the the local level, right? And then obviously, okay. yeah, in Trotter and then the region, right? Um, yep. with, you, know, you know, so I think all those ideas are going to be incredibly helpful. The one thing we will explore, and it, this, this, community, this committee will be part of the website development once we kind of get, like, in terms of being able to meet with the developer and throw ideas out. Is they've been on the other side of this. My understanding is that the references were actually in some of our seats at certain points, trying to educate communities, um, both from a PTO aspect, which is different, candidly, than us sitting here as appointed um, or elected officials, you know, um, in the conflict of interest laws that we have to follow. But um, I think all of that will be fair play, including social media, that we can also control to the extent we want um, as well. I think there's also a segment of people that may or may not access this social media or may or may not access the um, computer as well as, as some of us do. My question is, we really need to reach out to the senior citizens because they are a voting block and they need to understand. I don't know how we reach them if it's not by these means, but we need to along the way so that they're not dumbfounded and perplexed at town meeting as to how much it's going to impact the tax rate. Um. So probably not directly related to the website, incredibly important comment, probably part of what we're going to talk about next with this letter and the mm-hmm. next steps in the process. Okay. Kathleen, did you have something else or is your hand still raised from the first time? Oh, sorry. No, sorry. Okay. All right. So um, I don't want to negotiate against myself, but I think there's some more room mm-hmm. for negotiation in the pricing. So, um, but I don't want to try to do that here in a public meeting, obviously lower, not higher. Um, I don't want to hold up the process, and I think this is the right vendor. So, is everyone's comfortable with kind of the general scope? I would recommend that um, you know, subject to contract negotiation, right? Um, that we move forward with this proposal. I agree. I just want to see if we can negotiate better a better price. I agree with that wholeheartedly. So I would move. Have you already moved, Jason? I, that was not actually a first one. Right. Right. Roger, are you, before Denise makes a motion, do you have any additional thoughts? No, I'm good. And I think that's exactly what we should do. Okay. All right. Go ahead with a the motion then, Denise. All right. So I, I, I would approve um, going forward subject to uh, negotiation. Okay. Is there a second? Second. All right. Um, any further discussion? All right, roll call vote, Denise? Aye. Roger? Aye. And I am I as well. So um, I will try to negotiate and get this on the NBC agenda and then go from there. Yeah, the one thing I noticed um, is, and I I don't think, many times they don't do this, I, I, I don't see how many hours that they've sort of budgeted to do this. You know what I'm saying? And I guess that that really just translates to what they're trying to charge as far as the price. Well, exactly, right? So they've kind of given us a fixed fee proposal now, which means right. the hours are their business, right? Right, right. Um, but I, I'm i part of what I want to at least approach them on, and 
is, you know, we don't need to have the most robust, we need something that's functional, that provides information. We don't have to have the coolest and most amazing looking website off the gate. That may evolve over time, depending on the issues we're trying to face or pull or whatever we're trying to get information on. But we're just trying to get our framework up and running. And we may choose to add on as we go, as opposed to buying the whole suite now. And I realize you buy in pieces, it sometimes equals more. But I think that the full committee, if I were right, a, a financial subcommittee member or just you know an at-large member, would probably want to just understand the overall cost of this for this phase. And then obviously we we have another phase that we would budget for as part of any sort of construction project. And so if yeah, you're, when you if get you're, to, I'm sorry, go ahead, Roger. No, no, Denise, go ahead. Please. When you get to that phase, you are going to want to have visuals at that stage mm -hmm. into construction. You want to have visual pictures. You're going to need visuals to go to town meeting. So yep. that's mm -hmm. this phase. So um, you'll have visuals. It's just a matter of how many other pool functions that like you may have if you're trying to sell a product. We're not we're not selling anything, right? We're trying to educate. Mm -hmm. It's just a different. Yeah, I guess that I guess what I was going to say was if you're uh, if if you're saying that you feel we can reduce the scope of this uh, from what they've kind of presented, then without a doubt they should be able to do this for less. Right. You know, and that's, that's what I want them to, they're the expert. They should be able to come back and say, you know, this part, you know, you, you know, would save you $2,000 and you could live with that um, for this phase or bring it to your committee, right? And the committee can then make a decision of whether it's worth that 2000 I don't think we have those details enough to your point, Roger, to make that decision at this point, other than I can tell you the total cost kind of fits into what we had budgeted for this particular item within our article. Any other questions on the website? All right, um, communication. So um, the Aero Street team has hit the ground running at about a million miles an hour, not a thousand or a hundred. Um, Kathleen probably has felt that a lot. Um, I know Greg has, and um, we will talk far more extensively about scheduling and, and what's actually going on with the full committee. So we don't repeat that. Um, but it became apparent to Greg and myself that Greg needed to get in front of the faculty um, and staff of the district very quickly um, this week. And so Greg has already released a letter that looks very similar to what we're going to talk about for the public to the staff, because there will be members of the Arrow Street team in our existing facilities as early as next week. So, right. So obviously having the staff know where this process has been, has been an important part. Roger and I have gone to multiple um, staff meetings at the schools that were discussed for potential consolidation. Now Kathleen's school is right front and center, right. In terms of obviously everyone knew the project was going to be in and around Neary, but now what are we doing and how does that impact everyone on a daily basis? So, um, I give that disclosure because that was the basis of which the communication that we're going to approve today um, is based off of. It doesn't have to be the same um, in any way, shape, or form. And I took what Greg had sent to his faculty, which I don't believe we should be a part of going forward, right? Like, it's I think his job as superintendent, working with the principals and anyone else on his administration um, to update the faculty and staff about what's going on. Um, but our job, right, and before anything gets released to the public, unless it's like an emergency situation, my intent is to call you know that's this small group together to make sure we're coherent on the messaging and agree agreement on the messaging. So the purpose of such communication today is really to, in my words, wake the community up. Right, you know, we approved this article two years ago, and now all of a sudden, in a six-week time period there's going to be um, ample opportunity for anyone that's interested in the project, whether they have kids in the school or not, whether they represent, you know, a recreation group, youth and family services, a town department, there, there actually will be opportunities for them in public settings to also influence and provide 
guidance or you know to the design team to then inform the design team to come back to us with kind of initial thoughts as they move through and all of this and denise probably knows this better than anyone else is very prescriptive in um in line with the guidance that's required by the msba um in the mm -hmm. timeline is also very dictated by msba um in terms of that timeline that we talked about as a full committee last last meeting um this isn't anyone in the district making the schedule. Um, we're trying to fit in, but um, we don't, unless we want to further delay certain things and miss a potential MSBA meeting, um, we don't have much choice in, in terms of some of that. Um, so uh, with that being said, um, our goal today would be to um, agree on a wording for this distribution and then assuming we agree on the wording for the distribution i want to wait to see if greg is able to finalize the dates where the community may be able to attend certain sessions that's there's some tentative dates but they're in no way means confirmed and then we'll make a judgment call on whether we release this without dates and do a follow-up communication with dates i.e two communications you may get someone to read one of them um, sort of thing, or if we're going to have the dates on Monday, we don't want to send an email today and then an email on Monday, right? You kind of lose your messaging quickly. Um, but that would be the only thing that I would consider open um, coming out of this discussion is how quickly that schedule can be fully aligned um, because there's obviously a ton of moving pieces, especially given the time of year we're at from a, a budget cycle perspective in terms of the demands on a lot of people in terms of that plus their day jobs. So with that being said, um, my edits are candidly already in what I distributed to the committee for purposes of discussion. So I took Greg's communication, which he drafted, sent to the faculty, added in my edits of what wouldn't apply to the faculty, you know, what may have applied to faculty and staff doesn't apply to the public and vice versa. Um, and then I know Roger, you've had a chance to, um, you know, present a mark a markup that, um, you know, with various changes, which I have um, personally. If we want to start with that as the purposes of discussion here, I think would probably be the best avenue. Unless what, Denise, you have any other thoughts? Well, I had a couple. One, one is just a logistics. Will this letter, when we approve some communication, is it going to be mailed or it's only going to be available on a website or how are we going to communicate this letter? Um, a few things. It would be obviously part of any school communications. Greg mm -hmm. usually uses a judgment on whether it's a separate communication or part of Correct. individual targeted populations. It would be available electronically through the town. We would likely start enlisting the support of the blog in social media for getting it out. But mm -hmm. then to your point about um, people that don't use any of those forms of communication, um, we have um, Pam and the team at the senior center. Um, we usually will give it to them and let them distribute it in the means that they think their their membership, you know, usually accepts mm -hmm. it. Um, mm -hmm. They do have email lists as well. Um, they do have um other means of communication. But I think one thing we should be considering is um, if there are smaller messages moving forward, flyers, right? Like you could put a flyer mm -hmm. up in their building in particular, just mm -hmm. to say visioning session, today's date, this time, mm -hmm. right? Very simple. Mm -hmm. um, and then let the word of mouth, you know, right in that group, I think is very, uh, key to how they get their messaging out. But also, I think we need to not lose sight of kind of the work that Community Center Exploration Committee did in that they're, they're already pretty awake to this project because there are needs, right, from a senior center perspective, longer term, that are highly dependent upon the outcome of this project, right? Like in terms of what facilities are available to, to consider. So, um, but yes, sorry, long-winded answer, but it's obviously not a one size fits all. And the other comment I had, it does speak about um, conversing in these sessions. Uh, they, they list students. Which students are we talking about? Because obviously we're not going to be bringing in 
fourth graders, I don't think. Um, I think that's a discussion that the in, the administration's having um, the, mm -hmm. during the kickoff meeting. I think there was some discussion about students that have gone through these schools. Oh, right? okay. So, right. even, that, so yeah. even those that might be at Trotty or Algonquin as an example now, mm -hmm. but the visioning folks did not um, discount the value of even talking to a second or third grader in some instances, depending on, right? So it's a very different discussion, but I think there are, like, so they're leaving that to the principals in the administration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I just wanted to know how we would define the students, that's all. <clears throat> yeah, I think it's very broad. Okay. Um, so Roger, let's start with, I just, from a version control perspective, um, I know you had some proposed, what I'll call, I don't think there's content edits unless- That's correct, agree. that's correct. Uh, if, um, yeah, let, let me make three, let me make three comments. Go uh, ahead. Um, you know, the, the draft that you presented, I would have been fine sending out, uh, my, uh, proposed changes are really more form, personal preference, which isn't necessarily, I don't set myself up as the be all end up editor. And, uh, and I tried not to change any content. So uh, uh, I take really no pride of authorship, um, but uh, I, I've spent a you know this is this is my life is editing my kids' resumes when they were you know so, you know trying to, to, to trying to send things in for jobs or or school committee uh, uh, policies and things like that. So and I just really took a pass through this uh, you know twenty minutes before this meeting, Jason. So. Uh, just, I just want to make it clear. Um, any any version of this or the initial version or, or final. I mean, the, I looked at the content. The content seemed appropriate. So uh, uh, take it from wherever. Take it wherever you'd like to take it. All right. So Denise, any con any comments on the content? No, I thought the content was fine. Okay. Um, did you have a chance to look at Roger's markup? I I didn't get that. Did you send it in another email? Like you sent it like a minute before the meeting. So I, I just. Oh, 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 I was already on with you. Hold on. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I was already on and I didn't look at email. Um, yeah, I was hoping people would miss it so no one could object. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. All and, right. And I, I do have and, it. And I, and I do recommend when you open the Word document, uh, get, you know, look at it with changes off because, you know, there's a lot of red in it, which is not really uh, substantive. It's just, you know, I, I like looking around. at it with red on because even though there was red, I could see that you were changing tense and and, and stuff like that. Um, Kathleen, did you? Um, I guess while Denise has a chance to look at this, I'd, I'd like to hear your opinion on. Um, obviously, it's been a few days since your your team has seen notes from Greg, right? So, any initial feedback from that that may inform how we approach the public, and then two, just any anything on the content itself um, that you think would be valuable from your perspective. Excuse me, well, Jason, it, excuse me. It didn't come through to me. It just tells me to join the meeting again. All um, right, I will, I will pop Greg's version um, up. Um, let me, let me have Denise, I'll have Kathleen, while I pop it up, let's let Kathleen answer. Yeah, um, sorry about that. I didn't get it. I, I think Greg's communication was clear. I think it was timely and, you know, important that he send it and it, it, the content looks fine to me. All right, so let's see if I can get this right. That look like your version, Roger? Um, oh yeah, with all that red in it. Yeah, <laughs> but I think it I think it helps Denise see. Okay. Yeah. Posing grammatically, and that it's not content based, and this is the joys of working on a three person subcommittee, um, because you know. This is going to be our fun for the next couple of years. Just, I, I went through this with uh, Katura and Kathy a few years ago when we were going through the enrollment, and it was, you know, you can't you can't deliberate outside of a meeting, especially on content. So um, we're going to have to do some wordsmithing on the fly here as a team. So, um, but Roger, I think your process helped to um, hopefully move this piece along. So Denise, I'll give you a chance to read this. I personally had um, no issues with the. Um, 
wordsmithing that um, was done here. Okay, just give me a minute. I'm going to move something off here. Yeah, Denise, you'll you'll find this also in an email that came to you at two be two minutes before nine. <laughs> so so you'll 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 have it in your email, you know, uh, yeah. at least after this. That's fine. You know what happened? I was already on with Jason, so I wasn't looking at email. No, I I, I perfectly understand. And and I wish I had gotten it out a few days earlier, but. I was cautiously optimistic we'd have dates to insert um, into this, but um, based on a conversation I had with Greg yesterday, we're not ready for that. Yeah, I'm well, not, I mean, I don't have any problems with the way in which it was presented, the changes, it's fine. All right, so, um, and the one thing that I think Kathleen, and this is, a subtle point, but something we're going to try to make sure we're messaging appropriately. Um, in Greg's email to the faculty, I believe it said annual town meeting, which as of now always happens in March. Mm -hmm. We we as a committee are not going to be ready for March, but want to do it before May. And that's solely a subject of when MSBA plans to meet on our project, which is in April of 2025. Um, so um, we're gonna use the word spring. We as a committee have no authority um, to call a town meeting. That's solely with the right. select board, but obviously we have a select board rep and um, they are very, all five, um, what, regardless of what happens in elections every year, I imagine we'll always be in tune to this project given the magnitude of it on the community. So um, we're gonna use the word spring of 2025 and then in verbal communications, if anyone asks, the expectations it won't be at the annual town meeting unless some fundamental change happens to when we have town meeting. Okay. Um, would, that, right. would that in fact be considered, it would be considered a special? It would, yeah. So the select board would have to call it. Right. I mean, my personal opinion is I think I've presented before is um, given the magnitude in the population that may turn mm -hmm. out for something like this, mm -hmm. um, you don't want to co-mingle it with, with other items. You want this to be article one of that town meeting. Now, if citizen mm -hmm. petitions on other ancillary unrelated topics come forward, then the select board can do what they have to do after that. But the goal is that this is the reason why people would come. Um, and that's in fairness, candidly, to other articles that may be on a warrant um, in that, um, you don't want to change the type of population that may be showing up or deciding to show up to a town meeting um, for those articles, right? And it could be a distraction as part of an annual. Nor would we be ready, but yes. Plus, I also think if it was part of an annual town meeting, this is going to be a lot of discussion, take a lot of time. And an annual town meeting has a lot of articles, takes a lot of time to begin with. And I think it would become very cumbersome to add this on to a regular anyway. It would. I mean, you'd be looking at days probably, regardless mm -hmm. of whatever else is on there. But um, okay. So I'm going to move that we accept um, the version as marked up um, for purposes of distribution and delegate to the superintendent in the chair the exact timing of distribution of this email um, based on the visioning sessions being scheduled with the understanding that it will be distributed no more than seven calendar days from today. Uh, Greg, uh, um, so I just had a comment about Greg potentially um, looking at this. So. Will, will Greg be looking at this before we... Well, let me stop. Sorry. I need a second just so we can discuss it. Just oh, I'm sorry. I'll it. second it. I'll second it. Yeah. Sorry. Now, discussion. Sorry. Go ahead. Well, now, will Greg be taking a look at this before it goes out or just really entirely, you know, whatever we do here, 
um, it, it's just going to be the way it is, and we're not going to have anyone else take a look. Or uh, how, I, what's, I, what's your plan? He's my, got his name on this. Yeah, um, my process from here would be, um, Roger marked up your version, Greg. Um, so please make sure you're, you're comfortable with um, the edits. I mean, I think we've all agreed. None of these are content related. It's it's words and things. So um, I would get this ready for final distribution. Make sure he's comfortable, which I think is a necessary step in all of our votes. Um, and then um, between he and I, we would be responsible for the distribution. So yes, he would look at this before it went out again. So I'd like, okay. So I'd like to amend this uh, motion, uh, which we, we 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 do it, you know, a number of occasions on the committees I've been on. And by the way, I, I very much enjoy making changes to something that doesn't go out over my name. You know, that's those, those are the ones that I'm most most enthusiastic about. But I think I think to add uh, with any minor changes uh, determined by the chair, uh, okay. which, which allows, you know, it, it gives you flexibility to, to to change a couple of things, especially if Greg didn't like a couple of things. So that's what I would I would propose that as an amendment. All right. So let me just I'm just going to draw it. So we have one clean motion. Um, so I'm going to draw my motion and I will move that we um, vote and accept the um, marked up version that we've discussed at this meeting with the understanding and get delegation to the superintendent and chair to make any minor markup changes and determine the timing for such distribution but that that distribution should be no later than seven calendar days from today. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All right, roll call vote, Denise. Aye. Roger. Aye. And I am I as well. Um, all right, let me get back to my agenda screen here for a second. All right, is there any public comment? Uh, meeting schedule. So I think we're going to have to start meeting more regularly. Obviously, I think we got a two month hiatus on the communications um, subcommittee. Um, even with this group, it was candidly tough to schedule. And I know we're missing Stephanie today. And um, Greg, Greg's schedule was the exact opposite of some of the voting members. So obviously, um, we agreed to move forward. But um, I do think this group seems to be more flexible in, in ability to move, meet during the day than some of our other groups, which I think is good. So I will have Mariana poll um, in some way when we're ready for the next meeting. But I think that next meeting would be around the website, outside communication that's needed outside of the website, any letters that are ready to go at that point. And then obviously that, that work plan that the OPM worked through last meeting that may have modeled more of another community um, or other projects that I think they should be ready to bring us a NERI specific um, communications plan at this point. Um, so I will ask Jim and the team when they would be ready to bring a, a version that's ready for feedback from a self pro perspective as opposed to a um, broader format perspective. So I don't know the date, but those are the future agenda topics. So you don't want to agree on dates this morning? I don't know when we're going to be ready for that. Right. Uh, okay. But my my guess is probably two to three weeks out, obviously avoiding, mm -hmm. um, I know, February vacations in and around three weeks at this point. So we would not, I have no intention mm -hmm. of trying to do anything in and around that time for a lot of reasons. So, um, any other business today? Um, no, I, I don't. Okay. Nope. All right, I will move to adjourn then. Is there a second? Second. second. All right. Seconded roll call vote. Denise? Aye. Roger? Aye. And I am I as well. Thank you, Kathleen, for joining us. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Bye, I, guys. I am, I'm curious uh, just before we click. So um, there's some walkthrough scheduled on Monday and there's also this snow predicted on Monday. Is that gonna affect anything? I don't know if there's, I don't know if it's significant or not. Does anyone, did Kathleen, do you know? Or? 
So yeah, Greg had mentioned it at our meeting yesterday, but he said it 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 will continue even if there's a delay. We're still going to continue with the with the other times. So it was it's starting at Finn, then to Woodward and Neary. I believe it's twelve 